N nine eight seven six five four three. Welcome to Newport in the county of Gwent, where Wales are playing England in the 55th international baseball match in a series that started way back in 1908. England, having administered a shock defeat to Wales last year at Liverpool, come here as holders of the Gladstone Rose Bowl, presented in 1957 for annual competition between both countries, and will be seeking to prove that at long last, English baseball has emerged from the shadows. The Welsh team, still smarting from that 1979 defeat, their first since 1973, also at Liverpool, are equally determined before their home crowd to regain the Rose Bowl with a resounding victory. Wales showing four changes from last year of Steve Haynes, back after a serious baseball injury had cost him his place, Mike Smith-Phillips, who won his only cup in 1974, and Ivor Hughes, also back after injury. Captain is John Smith, again given the honour by the selectors, and who will open the Welsh attack. Again, on paper, Wales look a strong batting side, but can they produce the runs on the day? We shall see. England make only two changes from their winning side. John Clark at number four, with seven previous caps, and Les Marsh winning his first cap at number seven. And retained at number 11 is Jeff Lynch, whose tremendous bowling and batting against Wales was mainly responsible for England's win last year, and earned him the Man of the Match award. England, like Wales, have kept the same captain, Neil Rice, and he is a great motivator in the style of soccer's Brian Clough. England have wisely resisted too many changes and will rely on experience and not trial form. Can they win their first game on Welsh soil since 1970 when they triumphed by one run? Marcus! Referee today is Brian Grove, secretary of the Welsh Baseball Referee Society in Cardiff, and I've been informed that England won the toss and have told Wales to take first knock. Rather surprising. First batsman for Wales, Alan Harrison. Taking the strike from England's opening bowler, Jeff Lynch. And the first ball in this international is a no ball. Indicated by the referee, a footfall in front of the box. Not a very auspicious start. Brian Groves, very popular, very experienced Welsh referee. That is not a good call, but Alan Harrison decided he'd been there long enough. It's gone out in the country, out in deep. Alan Harrison is going to his third base, and he's going on for the first four runs of the match. Of not a very decisive stroke, but it's four runs in the book for Alan Harrison of the Civil Service Club, playing here on his own ground. Tries to play the ball to off, and he's clean bowled, and that's the first success for England and Jeff Lynch. Steve Haynes, number four for Wales, missed last international match to a very serious injury, but happily recovered. Captain of the Landrumney side, facing Jeff Lynch, and he plays a neat little shot down in the off field, where it's partly fielded. And he gets a safe two runs. He's going for three as the ball is put into the diamond, but not uh, towards three base. Three runs for Steve Haynes. Paul Cross, the only player today playing in spectacles. And he cuts that one into the off, and it dots right down in front of the fielder. He's going for his second run. He's been called to the third run by the prompter, and he reaches three runs safely. Ivor Hughes making a welcome return as well after a nasty injury which kept him out of the Welsh side last year. Backstop for Wales, earning his sixth cap. That was a good ball, just inside their off peg, well taken by backstop Neil Rice, but left alone by Ivor Hughes. That was another good ball, and it was well struck by Ivor Hughes, out in the country, deep in the leg, and he's reaching for three, and it will be a comfortable four base. 
the ball is not yet uh, fielded by England. A very good knock right round to leg by Ivor Hughes. Jeff Stevens, number 10 from also from the Landonley Club, 28 years of age, a local government officer. Facing the bowling of Jeff Lynch, and he takes his first ball, and it's caught. It's caught by John Jarvis. The English chairman, John Jarvis, takes a, a, a brilliant catch. Jeff Lynch is uh, known as uh, had a victim. Balling to Alan Harrison. And he's pulled down. Oh, it's well fielded by Johnny Jarvis. He's put it the base. And he's gone. The referee has given him an uh, out base. Well, we shall see that again. That was worth looking at. A good stop by uh, the Welsh fielder Johnny Jarvis and a good return into baseman Bobby Davin who lost no time at all in uh, basing Alan Harrison for the second English success. <laughs> Jeff Lynch with five no balls, he won't be too happy about that. Now we'll bowl to Steve Haynes batting number four for Wales. And he pulled out, and oh, it's a brilliant catch by Johnny Jarvis who'd moved around. Johnny Jarvis had moved around the field, very, very mobile, and took a brilliant catch straight off the bat from Steve Haynes. Paul Cross. And he gives that a tremendous float right out in the country. He's gone for two runs, and will he go around? He's got three and a tremendous typical cross clout off the beat of the bat and it's four runs for Paul Cross once again Wales 43 for four Mike Smith Phillips batting number seven for Wales beaded Mike Smith Phillips facing Jeff Lynch takes his first ball to the diamond just escaped uh, Jeff Lynch in the bowling box has been chased by Bobby Davin as Mike Smith gets the two and he's going for three as the ball is thrown in three and there's an appeal but the ball is dropped and referee Grove says three runs to Mike Smith good piece of fielding by uh, by Bobby Davin who come through the diamond picked the ball up a smart return into three base but it was a good three runs Jeff Lynch still in the bowling box to bowl to uh, number 11 Paul Gardner he puts it very short on a diamond. Lynch goes for it. It's a good throw. That was an excellent piece of feeling by Jeff Lynch, who had to run from his bowling box, pick it up sharply, and a return into Bobby Davin, who took it cleanly. And Paul Gardner was based out on one base. A very good piece of English fielding. John Smith coming up for his third strike. Still with Jeff Lynch in the bowling box. And he bows, and John, close to the body, pulls it round to leg, a very good stroke, off the meat of the bat. John for three, and he's going for four, he's going for four. Yes, it was a safe four and well called for by the uh, prompter, and there's a good knock for John who will be feeling very pleased himself. Last year when Wales were struggling, John put 29 runs on the board, a tremendous performance by the Welsh captain. Neil Rice, the uh, English skipper, is uh, coming to the diamond. He's calling on the other bowler, Freddie Price, left-handed uh, Freddie Price from the St Margaret's Club, winning his uh, 13th cap for England. And uh, Jeff Lynch's figures were five men out for 61 runs. I, I really think that there should have been an earlier bowling change, but I'm not out on the field. Field placings are being altered by uh, skipper Neil Rice. Left hand of Paul Cross. Punches it high, wide and handsome up in the air and is as a fielder of it. Bad luck on the uh, fielder, Jeff Lynch. Fielding deep over three and Paul Cross is going for four. And the Welsh score is uh, increasing rapidly. That was right, he nearly caught him, and he did. Yes, a very good piece of thinking by Bobby Davin, who left his base, 
picked up the ball three yards outside the line and threw the ball in to Freddie Price who'd run into one base and Ivor Hughes was very smartly based out a good piece of thinking by the uh, English one base and bowler David Richards number nine for Wales and oh he misses the ball and the backstop dropped if the ball is thrown wide and David Richards will take full advantage he's got the two he's going for three and typical of the English luck four runs there where in actual fact the batsman should have been on his way back been bowled and caught by the backstop Tony Murphy number five one good yes just inside the centre peg and well under the chin and Tony Murphy didn't want to know it probably couldn't play it left it alone but it's a good he must strike another good and that was a good and he was clean bowled bit of nerve possibly but Murphy with uh, eight runs to his credit has been clean bowled by Freddie Price John Smith coming up to bat knowing that Wales have reached 99 runs and this is rather a big score for international and he must be uh, thinking of a declaration I would imagine but... John Smith looking around batting number two takes a deliberate almighty swipe at that one beats the field gets two and he's been called into the uh, third base he runs out coming fast and furious and Paul Crossed with his four runs he made in his last with the pegs reached his 50 runs in international baseball quite an achievement and of course he is still there Paul Cross facing the bowling of Jeff Lynch who's coming into the bowling box and he hits that powerfully high over the top of the diamond but he's come under my commentary position here as Paul Cross gets to his third base and a comfortable four runs. Four runs. Making 21 runs to date in this game for Paul Cross. Wales, 107 for seven. Mike Smith Phillips batting then for Wales at number seven. Taken straight from Jeff Lynch. He takes his first ball. It's through the crowd in the off field. He gets to uh, three base and he's been called home. And uh, some of the runs are becoming ridiculously uh, easy. Four runs! But it's uh, four runs for Mike Smith Phillips. Very pleased on his return to international baseball. David Richards missed on a previous visit to the pegs by the backstop taking full advantage is he and he's clean ball this time I talked him out took a ball very close into his chest well taken by uh, Neil Rice so David Richards is out for a total of 10 runs he's made John Smith facing any goal and it strikes him on his uh, thigh but he is a docker he's used to things falling on him no treatment required I don't know whether the ball is damaged Gary Gall politely asks if he's all right and uh, resumes to ball and John Smith shows his appreciation by punching it up in the air where it's caught beautifully by Dave Thomas fielding very very deep over third base Dave Thomas of the St Margaret's Club took an excellent catch a very good knock and a very good catch by Dave Thomas on, Gary, on, 124 for 9 And referee Grove said that's a good ball above the knee. Paul Cross left it alone. He'll take the ball that he wants. And that's it. And it's hit it through the crowd again. Into the bushes on the off field as he goes round for his third run. And is being called home by his prompter for another brilliant four runs.
The ball has just been found. Mike Smith Phillips looking around. Good all-round games player facing Gary Gall. So very low ball, well below the knees, a bad ball, left alone. Mike Smith Phillips punches it into the off field. It beats the field. Thrown into the diamond, but Mike Smith Phillips gets yet another four, making his innings total to date 26. And that's the way to celebrate your return to the well side. It's uh, not an attacking field, it's spread right out. And uh, Paul Cross may well go for just a, a little touchdown to the leg or the slips because he can get there. There's no infielder. But he didn't. He took a punch. Now stopped by the crowd on the boundary, picked up by John Halliday and thrown in. But there was only two runs for Paul Cross. Very content, it's two runs and there's a man at home. Mike Smith Phillips to take strike, knowing that there is nobody home. He has to make uh, sufficient runs if he can to get Paul Cross home from two base. A dummy then by uh, Gary Gall can be very interesting. And he does take the first. And it's picked up by John Halliday, who's throwing a ball in the diamond. No, it's there. Paul Cross does get home. And Mike Smith Phillips gets two runs. But it wasn't a good uh, shot through the diamond. It could have brought the uh, Welsh innings to an end. And there's another bowling change. Jeff Lynch is coming in for his third spell to try and put an end to this uh, Welsh innings. Jeff Lynch to uh, ball to Paul Cross when Paul Cross decides to get into the batting crease, which he does, with Mike Smith Phillips still pinned on two base. Paul Cross takes his first ball and he's cleared the field in no uncertain manner. And Mike Smith Phillips will get home and Paul Cross makes another four runs and receives a, a great ovation from this Welsh crowd at I totally enjoyed this Welsh batting, even if perhaps it's gone on a little long. Wales, 141 for nine. And Mike Smith Phillips prepares to take strike, and he does through the field. It's a good one run. It was a near thing, but uh, he was there all right. There was no doubt it was one run. It wasn't a more positive stroke for a man batting number nine. Paul Cross, only man remaining home. Responsibility on his shoulders now to get Mike Smith Philip home around remaining bases while he scores himself. And he takes a first ball. And it's partly stopped by Jeff Lynch, but it's missed. It's into the backstop who fumbles the throw. And the ball is placed in the diamond and Wales are all out. It was a very poor stroke really from uh, Paul uh, Cross. It was through the diamond on the floor. Didn't give Mike Smith Phillips much chance to get around. Wales, 143 runs in their first innings. An uphill task for England as they start their innings with Freddie Price to open. Left-hander Freddie Price taking a good look round. Freddie, 34 years of age, an experienced international, winning his 13th cap today. Throws the pegs to face the first ball from Welsh captain and opening bowler, John Smith. Bad ball. Very high, wide, well taken by Ivor Hughes. John Smith. Going for point. First extra of the English innings. Freddie Price taking strike. 
and he takes it but it's well caught by Paul Cross fielding close in in the off field Paul Cross took a brilliant catch and uh, that's a sad start for England losing Freddie Price to a brilliant catch by uh, Paul Cross off the bowling of John Smith and he pulls that powerfully with all the beef he possesses right through the crowd right into the pitches as he's making three and he's making four runs that's a beautiful powerful shot John saw it well connected well we'll be very pleased with that his first scoring stroke in the England innings Dave Thomas 31 years of age from the St Margaret's Club batting number five for England takes his uh, first ball and I don't think it's gone where he intended it but he's scoring runs as he heads for three bays and he's going comfortable for his fourth run of a rather fortuitous stroke but it's four runs in the book he plays that comfortably up in the air but it's well taken by Alan Harrison and Les Marsh unfortunately doesn't score on his debut for England nice catch taken by Alan Harrison very happy on his own on his own ground Bobby Davin number eight for England 38 caps Correction, 37 years of age, he's not that old. And he's going for four runs. A good throw in by Derek Cruz, who left one base, but it was a good four runs for Bobby Davin. 37 years of age with 15 caps for England. England, 29 for two. With uh, a good crowd, thoroughly enjoying what's been a very good game of baseball so far. John Halliday face One goal. facing the ball in a good ball from John Smith John Halliday with a, a peculiar batting style the bat held right out in front of him not at an angle right straight in front of him as he's looking round to the leg field and he's given two goods and out lack of concentration I think by John Halliday because there was nothing wrong with the, those, those two goods particularly that's uh, that second good I think uh, we could take another look at that second good. Dave Thomas facing up to the bowling of John Smith and he put it up in the air and it's caught by Steve Ains feeling in the off position, only had to move two yards, took his time, watched it coming down, a good catch by Steve Haynes. Paul Gardner. Extra! Holding the ball away, hoping to entice Derek Carter to uh, have a pop at it. And at that, and he did that time. He bowled him another wide one, and Derek did fall for it. And he's on his way back. Derek Carter will be disgusted with his, his stroke on that occasion. John Jarvis, number three for England. Bad, Bad ball. Takes that one, it's up in the air, and it's well caught by Alan Harrison again. John Jarvis, uh, entitled to feel a little bit uh, upset with that one, a good clean punch, well towards the boundary crow, but Alan Harrison had moved around and has taken his second catch and must be delighted uh, at this on his, uh, his own ground as he plays for civil service. Forty-six for six. John Clark number four. Bad. And another wide ball from bowler Paul Gardner. John Clark, a good punch. Oh, and it's uh, well taken by David Richards. A good punch in the air and it was going away from David Richards, but he ran and judged it well and took it without too much trouble. An excellent catch by this young player. 
Harry Gall, number nine. No ball! And another no ball. And he sees it in time and he strikes it in time. And he's heading for his second run and he's going for his third. And the prompters calling him home. That's four runs. A very expensive no ball was out from Paul Gardner. Five runs added to the English score. Bobby Davin. Facing John Smith. Strikes it wide. Oh, and it's a brilliant catch by Derek Tuzer on one base. He dived full length to his left and took a brilliant catch to dismiss Bobby Davin. A fine piece of anticipation by Derek Tuzer, the Welsh baseman. Gary Gall must get Neil Royce around those bases. And again he clouts. Tremendous temperament, this young Gary Gall. Pushes the ball through the crowd as he goes for his third run and gets his skipper Neil Rice home to bat again a tremendous performance by this young player in a very difficult situation England 76 for 9 Neil Rice facing the uh, Roman John Smith knowing that they required 130 runs to avoid the follow-on 113 runs to avoid the follow-on there's an extra call by referee Groves captain opposing captain and that's a good throat by Neil Rice it's beat in the field into the crowd and Neil Rice is going for his third run as the ball is returned in some good batting by Neil Rice the uh, English captain and he gets himself to three base Gary goal number nine waiting for the delivery from John Smith and he takes it it's not a good stroke just wide one run, says the referee. Not a very uh, a good throw-in, not a very good stroke, but Gary Gall deserves to uh, live to fight another, another goal. Probably the pressure uh, told on in that time, because it wasn't a confident stroke, but he's still there, and that's all that matters. Now he has to get round the bases. Neil Rice. Bad. Bad. He rather ducked into that, but uh, referee uh, Brian Groves was satisfied it was a bad ball and said so. It's in the book as a bad ball. John Smith bowling to Neil Rice. One good, says referee Groves. I know the pressure is certainly on the English captain with his only remaining uh, batsman pinned on one base John Smith taking his time and it's a no ball but it was quickly recovered by backstop Hughes and prevented Gary Gall from making progress up to two base a very tense situation England requiring 113 runs to avoid the follow on have done very well as the ball is punched high wide of one base as Neil Rice gets to two, gets two runs for himself, and Gary Gall is uh, home. So a very good stand by this pair. The English score gradually creeping up. And the uh, Welsh uh, attack and field apparently unable to do very much about it. Gary Gall. England score 92, 113 required to avoid the follow-on, facing John Smith. And this time he is bowled. The ball is put in the diamond by the Welsh backstop, and England are all out. Well, that it is. Wales in their first innings, 143, and England replied with 92. Let's join David Parry-Jones, who is with the two captains.
Well, there we are then, a very exciting halfway stage of the International with the position on the board looking not unhealthy for Wales, but we can now have more expert comment on the situation from the two international captains. Next to me, Neil Rice of England and John Smith of Wales. It does look good for your side, John, especially when we think back to uh, the low score you were bowled out for at Liverpool a year ago. Yes, well, it does look good, but uh, like you say, we were bowled out rather promptly last year, so we can't take nothing for granted. We've got to really go in and do it again this, this innings now. All right, we'll talk about that in a second. Let's ask Neil what he thinks about the position. You're what, uh, 43, 51 runs behind on the first? Yeah, I'm not happy about the situation. We've got a lot to do. I uh, still think we can do it. John's in a bit of a position now. Here. He doesn't know whether to make his bat again, follow on. He's always got in his head that we can put them all out for 12, which I think we can do any time. Could happen today. So I haven't given up hope, but he's in the driving seat, but we'll be there, like. We'll come back to him He'll in a second. Just tell us a little bit about the state of the game in Liverpool. It must have been given a terrific Philip last year. Oh yes, tremendous. Last, last year was uh, about the best thing that could happen to baseball up in Liverpool. We started the Junior League last season and there's loads of young players coming through which we've never had before. I'm really hopeful for the future and I think the game can build up as strong as it is down here. We may see some of these youngsters getting caps then because we're, we're bound to notice in this side of yours there are a lot of old familiar looking faces. Yeah, well that's over the years it's been really there's nobody been coming up that can take the places off us you know a uh, little bit overweight and all this that and the other but we've always been able to put in a good game but now we've got uh, really good youngsters coming through and i think say three years time you'll see new slim line england and good enough to beat the welsh you know well we see about that um last word from you we've just seen your innings your first innings what do you think of the welsh fielding i thought it was excellent well the, it always impresses me but the, what i what i find the best part about it is to pick up and throw to us like you know that's a, a weakness in our game i think the throwing but in where in the welsh team you're just scared to move around the bases they hold you on the bases with the throwing and it must knock about 30 20 30 runs off each innings just the fact that you don't pinch bases you know and that's what impresses me more than anything good point john uh, thinking about the the welsh innings there were some choice performances some good innings including your own oh yes but uh, paul cross especially he's batted like that all season i mean there's not a bowler in the game to my opinion that can get him out i mean he's brilliant uh mike smith i mean he's a steady plotter all the way i mean when they stick like that it's the ball's like a football no matter who's bowling and jeff had some fair speed on him at the beginning of the innings and uh it, they take some getting out but when and you just a minute when you uh said about the fielding no way there's there's two boys in the welsh shirts that'll be with their heads down they drop catches and that's never allowed well, I never mentioned the catching. I just never mentioned allowed. what impressed me was the throwing. I well, the throwing there's a riot out. act definitely going to be run, uh, read by John in one second. Thank you both for breaking off to talk to us. Have you made up your mind while you've been listening to, to Neil here? What are you going to do? Put him in no, or no, bat yeah, again? Go back and have a talk with the lads. Great. We'll have to see what happens uh, out there in the middle. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wales uh, have a lead of 51 runs on the first innings and uh, Captain John Smith has enforced a follow-on, much to the surprise of a great many people. Freddie Price to take first strike and he's hit it to one base, Derek Tuza and England have made a very bad start. Freddie Price is out, hitting the ball direct to one base, smartly fielded by Derek Tuza and that's two ducks for Freddie Price, a most unusual situation but there it is. Number two for England, John Halliday. Will take strike from John Smith. Going away from the off peg, uh, John Halliday looked tempted, but experience uh, made him leave it alone. That was a better ball, and played confidently down through the off field by John Halliday, a safe one run. One good calls referee Groves, telling John Jarvis to stand up. His natural stance. He plays it dangerously into the off field between two Welsh fielders, but it's paid dividend because he's going for his third run as the ball is returned into the Welsh diamond. And it's uh, three runs for John, but a bit of a risky shot, but he's safe, quite pleased with himself. 
excellent crowd here, a very good crowd in Newport and thoroughly enjoying the baseball they've seen from both sides Welsh captain John Smith delivering to John Clark who takes it across the dime to three where it's three turning and he's out a good piece of fielding by number six Paul Cross who was covering the third base a good return into one baseman Tuza and John Clark is away back to the batting bench not having scored on this occasion England six for two Bobby Davin coming up number eight for England scored 11 in his first innings knock very experienced baseballer experienced enough to leave that one alone going away from the off peg And that one, another run to the English score. John Smith is obviously trying to make England go for that uh, ball going wide of the off. And that time it was, but it was well connected by Bobby Davin. Beats the field as he comes to his two base. He's going for three runs, and he's been called home by Prompter Clark, and Bobby Davin gets four runs. Nice knock by Bobby Davin, uh, a man for a crisis, I would say. Gary Goal, 21 runs in his first uh, innings knock. He'll take strike from Welsh bowler John Smith. Bad, very high above the batting crease, but high above the head. And he takes that one, and he treats it contemptuously and puts it out into the bushes as he gets to his three runs, and he's got a comfortable four runs before the ball is even found. A very good knock, continuing where he left off in the English first innings. Derek Carter, number 10 for England, 30 years of age, a boiler maker. Let's see what he can make of this next delivery from John Smith. No ball. And another no ball. Again, referee Groves indicates it's the front of the box that John is transgressing. Derek Carter, having uh, ignored the no ball, facing John Smith, gives a punch towards Paul Cross in the base, who throws it in, one-handed, and it's a good go, yes! A very good pickup by Paul Cross again, in an unusual position over the three-base area, a good throw on top of the one base, and well taken by experienced Derek Tuza, and uh, Derek Carter is out, but it's an excellent piece of fielding, traditional for the Welsh international side. Good pickup by Paul Krauss. <laughs> Jeff Lynch. Batting at number 11. He takes the ball, but he only hits it to Derek Tuza along the line. And Jeff Lynch is out. And are we on the verge of an English collapse? Dave Thomas. Didn't bat too well in the first innings, made only four. Facing the delivery from John Smith. Takes it, he puts it up in the air. And Ivy Hughes running some 20 yards from the uh, batting crease takes a good comfortable catch to dismiss Dave Thomas, who's had a, a disappointing uh, match so far. Neil Rice realising that uh, England uh, are somewhat in trouble being 51 runs behind on the first innings and uh, are not making 
all the progress that one would expect, although they are not being disgraced. Another wide ball from John Smith. Neil Rice, English captain. Again, refusing to be tempted by that off ball from John Smith. Neil Rice, number six. Pulls up beautifully off the body, but it goes out in the deep to Mike Smith Phillips, who returns it very quickly into the diamond. And Neil Rice is pinned on one base for one run. Les Marsh, number seven in the English lineup. Takes a delivery, John Smith, only to John Smith, who picks it up and throws it into one base. And Les Marsh is out for four runs. And this is his first appearance in the English uh, team. England 32 for 6, still requiring 19 to make Wales bat again. Gary Gall. And it's a beautiful hit up in the air. But it's in the air and it's well taken by Steve Haynes. It was a, a good knock up in the air, but it was well taken, well read by Steve Haynes, and he, he moved in quickly and took an excellent catch. And that was the end of Gary Gall. Paul Gardner bowled a great delivery, but it was a great stroke by Bobby Davin. And it's cleared the crowd on the, the off field. And Bobby Davin gets the three and he's tossed it on to four very, very comfortably. And England are making great efforts to uh, make Wales bat again. 46 for seven, still requiring five runs to make Wales bat for a second time. John Halliday. And he takes that, but he misses. It's well taken by Hughes who throws the ball into one base where Derek Tuza touches the base and John Halliday is out. Three runs this innings. Oh, he's clean ball again. Paul Gardner has clean ball. Johnny Jarvis and England are in trouble. They still lack the required number of runs to make Wales bat again. Tremendous uh, piece of bowling by Paul Gardner to dismiss the last two batsmen. So convincingly, clean ball in them. Bobby Davin of England, last man at home with Neil Rice pinned on free base in a very crucial situation. No ball! It's a no ball, the situation no longer exists. As Bobby Davin gets to two, is going for three as the ball is well thrown in three runs! by David Richards on the off field, but it's three runs plus a no ball and England will make Wales bat for the second time. Good knock by Bobby Davin, experienced baseballer, knew what was required. England, 54 for nine. Neil Rice, ah. placing Paul Gardner. Bobby Davin on three base, must get home. Neil Rice puts it up in the air, where it's caught cleanly by Mike Smith Phillips. And Neil Rice is all out for eight runs. And his match total for doings was 25. But England are in real trouble with just Bobby Davin to bat in their second innings. It now appears that the decision by uh, Captain John Smith of Wales to make uh, England bat again was the right one. Bobby Davin. And he takes that one, and it's up in the air. And Paul Cross have taken it deep and wide of two bays. Paul Cross made a catch, and the ball is placed in the diamond. England in their second innings scored 58, uh, leaving Wales to get eight runs for victory, as Alan Harrison comes out as number one for Wales. Jeff Lynch bowling to Alan Harrison. One good, says referee Groves. Jeff 
Lynch ball in. Bad ball, very bad ball. Another run for Wales. England must be bowling tight. They haven't a real target to aim for, it's true, but they must bowl tight. They bowled Wales out for 12 last year. That's a high ball. It's beaten the English field. It's one run as Alan Harrison comes in for two. Two runs. Two runs to Alan Harrison. Six runs remaining for a Welsh victory. John Smith to take strike from Geoffrey Lynch. Good ball, good confidence stroke down into the leg field. It's a safe one run only, only one run in it. This is John Smith, the Welsh number two. Derek Tuza, third batsman for Wales, four caps, had an excellent game on one base this afternoon as a baseman. Taken strike from the English bowler. Plays it very gently and lazily into the hands of Freddie Price in the leg field and Derek Tuza has gone. And that is two ducks for Derek Tuza. But his base work has been very, very good. He's played his part in what could be a Welsh victory. Steve Haynes. Number four. Captain of Lamanley has Captain Wales facing Geoffrey Lynch and punches it high wide over the race. And Stephen Haynes gets to one run, gets to two, gets to three runs, and it's three runs for Stephen Haynes on three big. One run left for a Welsh victory. Tony Murphy number five from the local club here St Michael's has the opportunity to make the winning uh, hit for Wales <laughs> Jeffrey Lynch is the bowler Tony Murphy is the batsman Extra Wales have won because an extra constitutes a winning score. And Wales have won with a score of eight runs for one man out. Wales have won by ten men to bat. Wales scored 143 in their first innings, to which England replied with 92. And then England were forced to follow on by the Welsh captain and made 58 leaving Wales eight runs to win, and this they did for the loss of only one man. There it is, uh, Wales with a resounding ten men to bat victory over England, have regained the Gladstone Rose Bowl, and the chairman of the Welsh Baseball Union, Mr Arthur Thomas, uh, will present the bowl to the winning Welsh captain, John Smith, who was so disappointed last year at Liverpool when he captained Wales for the first time. A very happy Welsh crowd, but it must be said in all fairness that England put up a very good performance and uh, made Wales go all out right throughout the game. So from all of us here at Newport, it's goodbye. We hope you've enjoyed our presentation. And uh, our next game on BBC Welsh Television will be the Welsh Brewers Cup Final, which will be played in Cardiff on the 9th of August. Hope you can be with us.